the one week update on the flash season nine episode two came out on tuesday about three days ago and this is my review after watching it like twice so uh, i have a few things to cover about this episode starting off with caitlin being dead um i really disliked how the team in the show just kind of moved on from that like pretty quickly you know by the end of the episode all Team Flash members are partying in a club and genuinely smiling and laughing together, even though their best friend, especially Barry, Barry's best friend of nine years, just was declared dead, basically. Not her body, but her personality, her mind, her mental. So I, I, didn't, I didn't really like how the team processed Caitlyn's death and, you know, also, when I was watching this, all I could think of was, where is Cisco? Like, at least, even if Carlos Valdez didn't show up in the actual episode, I would at least appreciate the characters mentioning Cisco and how he's taken it or whatever, you know, you can just come up with something. But Cisco was never mentioned, Cisco never showed up, and the team just sort of moved on from a friend of nine years just suddenly dying instantly. Secondly, is Mark Blaine as a character. I just find him kind of irritating. I'm not really too sure why they made him a series regular, and I'm not sure where they're trying to head with his character. It seems that he may go down like a villainous-ish arc um, after, that, after the ending of the episode because Hartley destroyed his machine. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not down to see it. Thirdly, is Cecile wanting to leave Central City and I guess it made sense. Like, this is the scenario that I thought of in my head and why it sounded so bizarre to me. Why she couldn't just accept to leave Central City. So just imagine, like, a, a city or whatever state or town with the highest cr crime rate. And for that, I chose Compton, for example. And just imagine that you are a police officer fighting crime in Compton. And... Your husband or your wife comes to you and whether they have money or not they are able to offer to relocate to another city or country or whatever and you refuse to because because of the city and just let's just say you are a mother or a father and a husband or a wife so it, it sounded so bizarre to me that like cecile would, she said that she had a lot going on and also on an unrelated note Cecile almost showing more emotion than Joe, but th that's another story. But yeah, it's it's about Cecile wanting to stay in Central City after witnessing so many deaths. I don't know how long ago, but but Frost's death was also relatively recent, and now she just found out that Caitlyn also died too, and she's still on the fence about wanting to leave Central City, even though she has gone through so much. It's not even a crime-fighting superhero properly, just just a lawyer affiliated with Team Flash. But on the other hand, I do kind of understand that someone may have like a deep connection to their career, and it may be hard for them to like leave it and drop it just at the front door, you know. Um, where was I? Fourthly, the flashbacks to an episode that aired literally one week prior, like. I don't get it. I don't know why they were doing flashbacks during this episode. It was just eaten away at the time because it accumulates. It accumulates the more flashbacks that you put and do. I can understand Flash doing a flashback to like season 8 or season 7 or any season before season 9. But this is the same season and this is the same episode. Just one episode prior. And they really did a flashback to that. And I, I just thought it was so unnecessary. And they, they could have saved that for anything else. Any little bit of dialogue in between that. Um, I also don't really know why they don't just bring back the whole previously on. For anyone watching the show. And besides. If you. Like if you're going to watch a second episode of season 9 without watching the first. Like I, I don't know anyone that does that to be honest. And I'm pretty sure they can watch the previous episode if they're going to watch a second episode, if you know what I mean. And next is Hartley Rathaway as a character as well. I just find him really cringe and irritating as well. 
and he was being like such a douche to Snow throughout the episode. And that little scene at like the bar or the club in the opening uh, and his fight with the Fiddler was so cringe in my opinion. It was like an anime fight. They were slowing it down in slow motion with the music too. And it was just so like unnecessary in my opinion. And also, I don't know why they were taking so long to like hit each other. This is not like, that's not how you would normally fight if you were trying to hunt someone down and kill them. You don't just go there and then pause and wait for the camera to capture your expression like and um and just the dialogue in my opinion was was also pretty cringe so yeah moving on um there are some like i guess good things to this episode it was pretty fun to see like barry mature or maturing uh when he was also like uh cut off to the idea of bringing back someone from the dead and all that so it just shows how Barry has basically matured, even though in season eight, he basically did the same thing or he would do the same thing if it were Iris. But um, yeah, I just kind of like how they're showing Barry maturing or as a mature person, because he now knows that you can't tamper with time. You can't bring someone back from the dead. It's not safe and it's heavily risky. And next, another complaint is just a bad fight choreography towards that final fight with Hartley Rathaway and Flash versus the Fiddler. Number one, the Flash should have, the Flash should have easily captured the Fiddler. But, you know, suspension of disbelief just to allow the show to work. Um, even then, the Flash should not just have stood there when he saw her, like, get in the microphone or whatever and planted her next attack. He's literally just standing there every single time and he's just looking out of his mask and it just makes him look like such a like a superhero who doesn't know what he's doing a superhero who hasn't been in the field for nine years and he's still making the same mistake and also i don't think they properly communicated the anger that hartley rathaway or the sadness that he may have felt after losing um whatever the guy's name is because to his knowledge he basically died right then and there by the fiddler's hand and he was just like, no, <laughs> like that, that's it. Like, that's really it. Come on. But yeah, um, I do think that sure, we don't have to have Barry defeat the Fiddler in like two seconds, even though he can, but it's the little things that add up. It's the fact that he was just standing there when she was getting ready to throw her next move. It's the fact that he was just, he was out of breath after phasing for like seven seconds. This guy phased a train. This guy phased a plane, a whole plane, an airplane. And he was tired. He was out of breath because of phasing out of like vibrational frequencies. So it just doesn't add up. And then another thing was the cinematography. The camera was kind of shaky when they were showing certain scenes. That just kind of bothered me. But, um, and also Barry randomly pulling out abilities from thin air. I don't have any problem with Barry showing new abilities, but I do have a problem when he shows off a new ability without having learned that ability and he shows it off at like an expert level still. For example, the season 7 fight with Godspeed. After he literally saw Godspeed pull out a lightsaber lightning, that's when Barry and Reverse Flash should just do it at the same time instantly without Barry ever doing something like that. And then in this episode, for example, Barry phases Hartley into like the vibrational dimension or whatever. And Barry has never done that. He's never done that. I would rather you have a character that specializes in sound and vibrations teach Barry how to do that or gives Barry the knowledge of the vibrational dimension or whatever so that Barry can accidentally tap into it or tap into it and be like, oh yeah, someone told me about this dimension. Not just him doing it randomly on a whim. Because that's not how powers and abilities really work. But all in all, there are some things to look forward to. Such as Red Death's motivation for what she is... Why she is doing what she's doing. Um, I saw like a fan theory that she is the Batwoman from the Armageddon timeline. I think I already talked about this in a previous video. I don't really want to see that because... Then you have to explain why any other character from that timeline isn't still alive. But um, 
yeah i'm looking forward to that and i think it, i hope it's good and also i really do enjoy the aspect ratio that they decided to keep this episode and i really just like enjoy how much crisper the quality looks each time so uh, yeah that's about it peace